It just all seems to be going wrong for Southampton. Russell Martin loses really badly as well. And for that reason, I kind of want to see Birmingham win because I want to see bite even harder. I just want to see him lose his rag even more as exactly, the season goes exactly. on. Southampton were beaten by Liverpool's children in midweek. Barely laid a glove on them. St Andrews seems to have an extra zing to it right now. And the Birmingham fans will be right up for this one. Hello and welcome to the Second Tier Preview Show brought to you by SBK. I'm Ryan Dilks and I'm joined by the Jan Sievert to my Andre Brighton writer. It's Justin Peach. Good day to you, Ryan. Oh, Justin, it's preview show time, baby. And that means we've got another cracking weekend of championship action on our doorstep. So that's bloody exciting, isn't it? And you want to know what else is exciting? Our competition for free copies of Football Manager 2024. Yes, that's right. We have another giveaway to do. I mean, I say another giveaway. It's the same giveaway as before. Um, But if you listen to Thursday's edition of the second tier, then you'll have heard that we're giving away not one, not two, but three copies of Football Manager 2024 for free to be in with the chance of winning all you have to do is leave the show a five star review on whichever podcast platform you listen to us on screenshot it and then email secondtierpod at gmail.com with the subject line football manager 2024 competition we will reveal our winner on next thursday's show so get a move on quickly it'll take you barely any time at all Really, it really, really will. And you could be the lucky recipient of the brand new Football Manager game where you might soon get asked by a question by us in a press conference, by the way, because we are being added to the game in the not too distant future, which is very exciting, isn't it? So leave us a five star review, screenshot it and then email secondtierpod at gmail.com with the subject line Football Manager 2024 competition. It's as simple as that. Who's your current save, Justin? Uh, my current save is always Derby. You shouldn't ask me this. My current save is always Derby. Unfortunately, You're I so just, bland. I am so bland. But I tell you what happened. Oh, oh my god! Actually, this is a really good story. There just finished go. my second season. Hundred and six points. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Which league? Championship. I got promoted in the first season from League One because the squad's simply too good. Championship. Hundred and six points. And Sometimes guess what? The game's not always accurate, is it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it's unrealistic. No, I'm joking. It's as close to football as you'll get. Um, yes, 106 points. But guess where I finished? You didn't finish top? I didn't finish top. Wow. Leicester City finished top ahead of me. And then Norwich finished top, uh, third on 106 points. God. Wow. Goal difference. It might, be the, it might be a carbon copy of this season, the way things hopefully, are going. Hopefully. And obviously, without Derby and, and probably Norwich. But yes, 106 points. Three teams finished on 106 points. And that's the sort of drama it gives you, ladies and gentlemen. So you cannot miss out on this giveaway. Good stuff. Who was the first player you signed? The first player I signed? Um, I signed, oh, I cut a Colombian, um, Matthias Lava, Lava, La Casa or something. I can't I'm actually sure remember. sure he's great. Who's, who's a player everyone actually knows? A player everybody knows. Who's, I your think best player, I who's, your, who's your best player in the championship season? Go on. Ooh, I signed Victor Wanyama on a free. <laughs> where, where on earth has that come from? Yeah, yeah he, play? he got released. I think it was from Sporting Kansas. I can't remember who it was at. Or it might have been um, Vancouver or something. But yeah, he got released. 33, I was like, you know what? Need a bit of need a bit of defensive solidity in my midfield. Let's get him in. Big Vic. Good stuff. Good Storyteller. Stuff. Love spaghetti as well, doesn't he? Welcome exactly. to the number one championship podcast, the second tier. Thank you for joining us wherever you are. Yes, this is indeed a preview show. So we're going to be making our predictions for the weekend as well as talking about one of the big games of the championship weekend, which we'll get on to very shortly. We've also got the classic Scott High or Ryan Lowe to round things off as well. So let's kick things off with our game of the weekend, Justin. And it's the big West Yorkshire clash between Huddersfield and Leeds. Huddersfield are 24 to 5 to win this, while Leeds are 5 to 8 with our friends at SBK. I believe, Justin, I believe this is the first ever championship meeting between two German managers. How about that, eh? That surprises me. That really does surprise me. Yeah. And I know those, there's going to be people listening to this podcast shouting, David Wagner, David Wagner. Well, he's technically American, actually. So uh, that any meetings he's had with Daniel Farker don't count. So wow. put that in your pipe and smoke it. <sighs> well, to be fair, I, did, I mean, didn't I wasn't actually sure David Wagner was German or not, but I, now I'm convinced he's born that he in is. Germany, I think born in Germany. I think he was. What sort of passport has he got? Has he got a US passport or a German passport? Well, the reason I say he's American is because he played for America when he was a player. But uh, I, th- I, I think he was born and raised in Germany. See your arguments unraveling right in front of you, Ryan. 
no, right in front no, of you? No, no, no. Does he identify as German? Well, you, you'd have to ask him, but in terms okay, of if we're going down out. the football route where your nationality completely changes as soon as you represent a country, then in this case, it's the first meeting in the championship between two German managers. And ah, that's yes. all I care about. Ah, End yes. of conversation. That, um, that, that Irishman, Declan Rice. <laughs> Well, uh, no, 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 right, right. Well, obviously he plays for England, doesn't he? But I mean, like, your better example would have been Lee Carsley, wouldn't he? Because he's the first person who came to mind for me as someone who was born in England, but went on to re represent Ireland. Anyway, it doesn't matter, Justin. Stop talking about it. Um, let, let's talk about this big game of the weekend, because Huddersfield have seen an upturn in results. But will it be enough to stop the Leeds United Juggernaut. I mean, this tends to be a juicy fixture anyway, doesn't it, Justin? Because just 18 miles separating the two places, although Leeds will obviously see other clubs as bigger rivals than Huddersfield, but it's still a fixture which has provided some memorable moments over the years, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. I was actually looking through the archives and I found quite a few. And obviously, I mean, the obvious one is the David Wagner game where he runs down the pitch after Michael Heffley scores the winner. But mm. then I go back to even further to 2008 where Huddersfield score a last minute winner at Ellen Road. Win for the first time since the 80s. There was a 3-2 game in 2013 when Danny Ward actually scored in that, which is 11 years ago. Um, but yeah, the one that really does spring to mind is the uh, is the Hefele winner, which yeah. sparked which sparked a lot of controversy and a and a very spiky Gary Monk after it. Yeah. Oh, good times. Good times. I remember that Hefele goal. That was like a that was that was Huddersfield's promotion season. It was. Yeah. It? Yeah. And that Drama. was the, that was the moment I think that really spurred them on if I remember things correctly, um, in their promotion push. But, I mean, look, the, I called them the Leeds United juggernaut not too long ago because they've showed no signs of slowing down, have they? If they win this, they'll become just the third team in championship history to win 10 games in a row. No side has ever recorded 11 consecutive victories. The big obstacle for them in breaking this record was Leicester, and they've got past that now. So what's stopping them from breaking it, Justin? Ooh, uh, themselves, it's all very leads to uh, to shoot themselves in the foot at the peak peak time. Um, but I don't think it's you know if you look at it this maybe subjectively, they are looking like they are unstoppable. They are looking like a juggernaut. They are befitting of that that description because of how ruthlessly brilliant they've been since the turn of the year. Since yes, yeah, since the new year, they've been fantastic. And then even in midweek when they lost to Chelsea in the FA Cup. They were brilliant. They were fantastic. They pressed Chelsea. They caused problems. I know Chelsea aren't in a good moment. Um, you know, at the time of recording, they're struggling. But they really gave them a game, and it took Chelsea eighty nine minutes to come through that. They apply that in the championship in a championship game. When you know, no disrespect to anybody in the championship, they're not going to have a billion pounds worth of talent in their squad like Chelsea do. You know, Leeds are going to be up for it. It's going to give them the onus, and they've got players in form as well. So many players in form. Um, and I think that's just going to swing swing things their way. But as I say, they are looking unstoppable, ruthless, clinical, all of the above. Yeah. Well, I mean, for 80 minutes in the game on Friday, last Friday, between a, against Leicester, obviously, they did look like they may be slowing down, but then they still managed to find a way to get through and get the three points. And that was the moment where you thought, OK, if, if they're not losing here, then... When are they going to stop? I mean, if they get past Huddersfield this weekend, they've got Stoke in midweek. So what I'm saying is, if they beat Huddersfield, they've essentially broken the consecutive <laughs> wins record. Um, Leeds are now eight, uh, 38 to 10 to win the title, having been nearly 11 to 2 on the opening day of the season. So it's looking very, very good for Leeds. And I imagine those odds are only going to shorten as time goes on, especially if this winning run continues. If Huddersfield get a result, though, this will be an excellent feather in the cap for Andre Brighton writer, won't it? Or Dre, as we're calling him now, isn't it? Yeah, I was so glad you brought up Dre because I was going to call him the Dre. So I'm glad there's more context there for the for the yeah. dear old listeners. But well, the, it, the context is his name's too long. <laughs> we're very lazy here. So if we get the chance to shorten his name to just one syllable instead of, what, six or seven, however long it is, um, then we, we're going to take it. But yeah, what, what, what about old Dre, Justin? Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre, old Dre. Dre... <laughs> yep, Dre from Huddersfield. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to you know, think of cool people, um, uh, but I can't because I'm not cool myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> it would be a huge swing of momentum for um, for old Dre and, and Huddersfield because I mean they need it because they need to keep pulling themselves away from the the bottom three, um, and they are looking like they're doing that. 
we've mentioned John Worthington a lot. He's laid some really good foundations for, for Dre to take on Huddersfield and, and, and push him to the next level. And that win away at Watford last weekend was a was a tough win. It was a hard win, but it pushes confidence to new levels and you're going to need that going into a derby. And you mix it with a derby where games are you know closely contested. They're difficult to really express yourselves. Yeah, it could really, really put, um, put some of the onus back into Huddersfield and, and, and put these under pressure. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite hard to really judge Brighton writer or Dre uh, based on the limited time he's been there so far but getting Danny Ward to score a double is bloody fantastic yeah it's a good start isn't it because Danny Ward isn't the most free scoring of strikers third, third goal this season second and third goal this season well there you go then um, he's a miracle worker is what Justin's trying to say <laughs> I mean what we've been told about Dre is that he's got a record of getting teams going even when they may not have the resources or talent in huge supply. And look, they got a great win last weekend away at Watford in Dre's first game in charge. And if I dip into my big bag of cliches, form goes out the window in a derby. So there's loads of things they can take encouragement from here. You know, the fact that it is a derby, the fact that they had a great start under Andre Brighton writer, the fact that they've got this form going and now the players have got a bit of confidence about them when they didn't a few months ago. I mean... The only, the only thing that they can't take encouragement from here, and it is a, it is a small one. They're facing one of the strongest teams in the league at the <laughs> worst possible time. Yeah. You know that's quite a big obstacle to overcome. But you know, I, I think they can come and they, they can head into this with them fancying their chances of getting something from it, Justin. Yeah, but uh, you say they're going into and playing the the, the best possible team or the, the worst team at the, at the current time. Um, psychologically they can take your foot off the gas you're not going to take your foot off the gas sorry that's not what I'm saying psychologically it's going to play into your hands a little bit because it's not not necessarily a free hit but you go into that without pressure because there's an expectation that Leeds are going to win pretty much me how Leeds felt going into the Chelsea game and that's why they were was, was so brilliant I mean, Huddersfield are going to have the same thing going into this game because they're not no, no one's going to back them they've just got to go out there and express themselves the way they have been doing and hopefully hopefully they can put away some of the chances that they will create because they have been much more proficient in, in, in getting into good areas. So, yeah, I don't think it's a given that, that leads a win. I think it'll be a tighter game than, than many suggest. And um, I, as you say, it's, it's, it's a terrible time to play Leeds, but it's probably the best time to play him as well because Huddersfield can go into it without that pressure. Yeah, well, the fact that only two teams previously have won 10 games in a row shows that Eventually, this form is going to end at some point. <laughs> so why not this weekend? I mean, it's going to be bloody hard breaking down this Leeds team, considering they've only conceded one goal. Um, no, two goals, sorry. This calendar year in the league. Um, but hey, why not? Anything is possible when you've got Dre in charge. It's now time for our second tier bet builder with SBK. And with SBK, you can create your own bet builder from a range of markets for any championship game. It's easy, fast and secure on the SBK mobile app. And you'll find substantially better odds there than any other bookmaker. So every Friday, we're making our own bet builder with four selections all relating to our game of the week. And by the way, I tell you what, we were bloody close last week, Justin, with Leeds v Leicester. We had Leeds to win, Crescencio Somerville to score, Yannick Vestergaard to be carded, and both teams to score slash over 2.5 goals. The only one that let us down there was our pick of, oh, your pick, of Somerville to score. But apart from that, not bad, eh? You're always going to back some to score, though, especially in these big games. So let's it's, 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 it's not have a go at me. Let's not have well, a go at me, but I, we were close. Hey, it's hey, as close as we've been. Hey, hey, I, I'm I'm not having a go, Justin. I'm just pointing out facts. But I mean... <laughs> pointing for, out for my Leeds, flaws. Well, that too. Uh, <laughs> for Leeds to score three goals and not one of them be one of, I don't know, Piro, Ruta, <laughs> <laughs> Nonto or Somerville, that you've, uh, you, you, yeah. you're unlucky there, I suppose, aren't you, really? But I mean, look, the way this bet builder works is Justin makes two selections. I make two selections. So let's see what Justin Peach has gone for this week. What are you going for, big boy? I'm going with Big Willie Nonto to score and Leeds to keep a clean sheet. Ooh. Now, Nonto has got five goals in his last seven. He was rested against Chelsea, so he's going to be chomping at a bit against Huddersfield. Going over to the clean sheets, seven clean sheets to nine in the league, coming up against Huddersfield side, who aren't prolific goal scorers. I, once again, fancy my chances, but like I said, I can let you down. 
You always can. Um, I have gone for Yuta Nakayama to be carded and Leeds to win. Now, I pointed this out in the Leeds v Leicester game last week that the opposition left-sided centre-back has been carded in five of Leeds' last six games. And lo and behold, Yannick Vestergaard eventually got a card last week. So let's keep that trend going. It's now six in seven. So there's a great chance that Nakayama is the next one in line for this crown. So that's why I've gone for Nakayama to be carded and Leeds to win. Do I really need to explain that? I, mean, we've, I, I think Huddersfield can head into this fancy in their chances, but Leeds are just br absolutely brutal right now. Merciless, aren't they? So you'd have thought that Leeds will win, but hey, anything's possible in the championship and particularly in a derby. So a £10 bet with SBK on that returns £138. New SBK users can take advantage of £30 in free bets when you place your first £10 bet. T's and T's apply over 18s only. And please do gamble responsibly. That again is Willie Nonto to score a Leeds clean sheet, Yuta Nakayama to be carded and Leeds to win. A £10 bet with SBK on and that returns £138. Let's have a look ahead to the weekend then, Justin. And in each preview episode of the second tier, Justin and I will each pick a banker, a team we think is guaranteed to win this coming weekend, as well as an outsider. So someone we think is going to win, but is bigger odds with our friends at SBK than their opponent. We're tracking how we do as the season goes on. One point for a correct banker, two points for an outsider. Whoever loses has to do a forfeit, which will be a CrossFit workout for myself, while Justin has to do a coach trip from Sunderland to Plymouth and back. The current scores are 36-26 to myself, but it was the perfect weekend for Justin last weekend after he got a full house and I drew a blank. So he managed to claw back three points do you think this is the start of the greatest comeback mankind has ever seen, Justin? Yeah, maybe I should get manager of the season rather than Danny Royal or Kieran McKenna, as we discussed in a, a previous episode, if I could turn this around. I'm just saying, it's a big it's a big old point swing that I've got to claw back. And if I do it, F you, Danny Royal, I'm coming for you. OK, well, he, you've heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Justin Peach fancies his chances. I mean... I'll need to do the maths, but there can't be many weekends left where you can mathematically actually get back level a bit level footing with me um i'll have to do the maths at some point but i mean <laughs> I, producer finn coins this the other week the peach posse will be buzzing at you um managing to claw some points back and yeah, you know, still everyone, have a chance everyone wants me to win don't they no one wants you to win no one likes you right you don't care though do you you are mr millwall I mean, that's very harsh, but you are right. No one likes me. I don't care. Um, I mean, we, I, I'm sure I have got some support in the fan base. The Dilks Diehards is the other name that uh, producer Finn coined for, for me. So, you know what? Listener, let us know. Who are you supporting, the Peach Posse or the Dilks Diehards? Now, I wow. mean, look at the scores. There's only one answer here, but let us know. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, comment below. If you're listening on whichever podcast platform you listening to us on then you know leave a review and comment out there instead and um, anyway justin let's see if you can make any more headway this weekend it's time for justin peters banker what has he gone for uh, i've gone for bristol city to beat cardiff in a seven side derby it's a risky one this a huge risk but in a derby at ashton gate I'm, I'm going to be logically edging towards the home team doing some more digging cardiff's inability to create outside of set pieces that's the big swing for me they're prolific scorers from seven uh, from set plays. They score 17 overall, but that's 43% of their goals. Britain and Bristol City have the joint best uh, record when it comes to defending set plays with six. So they're coming up, Cardiff are coming up against a side who have got their shit together when it comes to getting organised. They know what they're doing. They know how to head it and kick it away and defend the front posts and all of the above. But I am expecting a tight game, and I think one where chances will be limited. Bristol City probably possess the more clinical potential, although the top scorer, I think, is Tommy Conway with six. Um, but they've got a little bit more of the X factor about them under Liam Manning than Cardiff do under Errol Bullet, in my opinion. So, yes, set pieces is a big thing for me. I'm edging towards Bristol City with this one. Yeah, I mean, it's a derby, as we say, and big back of cliches, form goes out the window in the derby, and, and Cardiff have been pretty woeful recently, although they did get the win against Stoke last weekend, didn't they? Yeah. Which I think was Stoke just tax. Be, yeah, there is Stoke tax involved there. Stoke are crap, but, you know, they, they will take confidence from that won't they? However, I have seen a bit of 
scepticism from certain sections of the Bristol City fan base on social media over the past few days, Justin, about whether Liam Manning is the right man to take Bristol City forwards in the long term. Is that something that uh, you've been thinking about here? Not particularly. I think he still needs time to get his style of play. I think if I go back to when he was at Oxford, it took a little bit of time to bed in and then they started to take on another gear this season, although obviously not seen that project out. I think as well as that, they're currently 12th. I would have them much lower if Nigel Pearson was still in charge. So there is progress there. <laughs> He's had a fair few injuries to deal with. Scott Twine still not got up and running. Um, so I think once things subside a little bit, maybe strengthen in summer, I think he will be the right man. It's just a case of let's see, uh, see the season out. Just checking, the last three results in the seven-side derby have each been 2-0. Two, um, two to Cardiff and one to Bristol City. So will that continue this weekend? Who knows? But this is my banker, ladies and gentlemen. I've gone for West Brom to beat Coventry on Friday night. It's a West Midlands derby of sorts, featuring two teams who want to be in the playoffs come May. And West Brom have a great chance to create a bit of breathing space between them and those pesky top six chasers. And look, they should be looking to get three points here as well. Coventry are a very good side, but their problems are mounting up. The latest one being a season-ending injury for Tatsuhiro Sakamoto. He's been excellent for them in recent months and they'll miss the flair he brings to the side. That's on top of the injury too undoubtedly in my mind the best player they've got in Ben Chief so they're down two extremely important players there and their form has been a bit shaky recently as well it's just two wins in six league games they had gone 10 unbeaten prior to that it seems to have coincided this dip in form with the injury to Ben Chief and that's not not a surprise because as I say he is so crucial and adding Sakamoto missing as well that's that's not great. So they've lost quite a bit of momentum, have Coventry, and they'll do well to get something from West Brom away, which is a really tough hunting ground because mm-hmm. only Ipswich, Leeds and Leicester have a better home record than West Brom. They've only conceded 13 goals in 17 league games at the Hawthorns as well. It's an absolute fortress for them. They're a very consistent side. You get at least a 6 out of 10 performance from them in each game. So West Brom should be looking at this and be thinking it's a very winnable match and also a huge opportunity to create a bit of breathing room for themselves. What do you think, Justin? Are you agreeing with me? Uh, I am to an extent. I think it's a hard one to call. I know the Sakamoto and Sheaf injuries are, are big factors in, I think, in deciding whether a commentary, you know, convincing they're going to win a game or not but they have collected 13 from uh, 13 points from 18 in the last six away games so they are a pretty decent away side um so you might you know that might edge edge things towards them a little bit more i think it's too hard to call for me uh but the injuries are big things that being said west brom are so good at home if they t- if they take a one nil lead they are coventry going to break them down not many sides have broken down so far yeah but they go they're good going forwards aren't they but Losing Sakamoto is a big blow. They've still got Calamo Hare, Haji Wright. Ellis Sims has finally found a bit of form as well. So they've certainly got the attacking talent. But breaking down this West Brom side is something that has been quite difficult to do, as many teams have found out this season. Cedric Kiprate in particular has been in sublime form. So that's what Coventry have got to do. Whether they can do it or not remains to be seen. But... Speaking of West Brom, they'll have an extra spring in their step, won't they, as well? Because American businessman Shailen Patel has now completed his takeover of the club. We did speak about this previously, Justin, when we saw that he was the preferred bidder and it was just a matter of, you know, dotting the I's and uh, crossing the T's. But this is so big for the Albion, isn't it? Massive. It just means that everyone can just breathe a little bit now. You know, they don't have this overwhelming pressure that their club might, you know, the worst thing might happen to the football club. And that's that's been the... The, the scaremongering and the, and the threat is the club might go out of business because of the amount of debt it's run up, run up. And I think that's the key thing here. And as I say, it's just going to lift lift that pressure a little bit. Everyone can breathe and hopefully, hopefully, um, the club can now just focus on the football side of things because when was the last time they were able to just focus on the football? It feels like there's been takeover issues for years and years and years. It feels like it's been a really long time. So fantastic news, great news, and hopefully the club can just kick on now. Absolutely. So there are mine and Justin's two bankers for the weekend. Every week, we combine these two selections with a bet on the full-time result of our game of the weekend to create our very own second tier featured multiple with SBK. And look, we were close with the bet builder. We were close with this last week as well because we've just got the one wrong. That was me. That was my fault on this occasion. (laughs) Um, You know, 
broken clock is right twice a day or whatever. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I've got a good feeling this is the week, Justin. We're finally going to get one of these right, and I think it's this weekend. But this is what we've gone for. West Brom, Leeds and Bristol City, all to win. A £10 bet on that returns £66. With SPK, you can create your own multiple with three or more bets on the full-time result of any game from across the Championship. And on top of that, our good friends at SBK have been incredibly generous this weekend because you can also claim a 50% winnings boost on first goal scorer for West Brom v Coventry. So with that being said, I'm going for Mikey Johnston on that one. He's been in sublime form recently since joining from Celtic in January. Looks a really lively player, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. He's very direct as well, so a £10 bet on Mikey Johnston as first goal scorer returns £138 with that winnings boost. Good stuff. T's and C's apply over 18s only. And please do gamble responsibly. Just before we take a quick break, Justin, we have got news of a massive blow for Sunderland because Jack Clark has been ruled out for up to six weeks with an ankle injury. That's a potential hammer blow for their playoff chances, isn't it? Because Jack Clark is essentially Sunderland this season. No, absolutely. And as I think you know, the season ends earlier than normal. Um, he's out for six weeks, which is pretty much majority of the rest of the season it's it's a huge huge blow and I think to be fair though I think the major hammer blow Sunderland did in terms of harming their playoff chances was sacking Tony Mowbray not bringing in a manager that was capable of getting him into the playoffs That's for right. me to really just stick kick, just kick him while he's down yeah. That's it twist the knife a bit further yeah. um, but look I, I think I'm right in saying there's nine weeks left of the season maybe ten so six weeks where you're missing Jack Clark is you know it's it's massive, absolutely massive, isn't it? Because so many times this season, Sunderland have underwhelmed a bit, but they yeah. can rely on Jack Clark providing that spark, that extra X factor to create something out of nothing, charge at a defender, rip him to shreds, and then you know either set someone up or fire in the back of the net himself. And now that he's gone, that leaves Sunderland lacking a lot, doesn't it? So it does. with, with regards to their playoff chances... I'd say it's looking very, very slim now. They were fading anyway because of the whole McBeal saga. Now it's looking pretty, pretty slim. It's got to be said, unfortunately. Let's take a quick break, Justin. After that, we'll talk about our outsiders for the weekend in the Championship and also Scott High or Ryan Lowe. Welcome back to the Second Tier Podcast and it's now time for Justin and I to reveal our outsiders for the Championship this coming weekend. Justin, you've had a pretty decent record recently with your picks. Let's mm-hmm. see if your outsider is one to be increasingly hopeful about. You tell me, Ryan. Preston to beat Hull is the one I've gone for. Ooh. It's an outsider. It's a big outsider because of the quality Hull possess, really, and the fact that they're unbeaten in the last four games. But Preston are the second most informed team in the division over the last six games. Incredible. Incredible. An accidental runner form has put them into playoff contention. And now they are... As high as they've ever been in the table at this stage of the season. They've beaten Coventry, Ipswich and Burrett in the last six games. Tough fixtures and they've come out the other side. Got Emil Reese, uh, Emil Reese is in form. Will Keane, Will Keane is always a threat. And press on the counter-attack as well against Coventry. It was so, so dangerous. And they're coming up against a Hall side who like to play it slow, which could play into the hands of, of Ryan Lowe and Preston. So for me, I'm going with Preston to beat Hull. I'm nervously saying it because at no point would I have ever backed Preston for anything this season because they are simply so inconsistent but actually they've been very consistent and that has therefore convinced me and Ryan Lowe is the man been consistent over five games is what you're saying six games six games six games even. give him some credit yeah it's not, it's not been a long runner for I don't, I, don't, I don't think we can coin him with consistency just yet um, I was perhaps a bit surprised by this Justin because well of course they are in good form you were saying in Thursday's episode that you still weren't getting carried away with them. You still didn't think they would get into the playoffs. So yeah. I assume you you think this form is going to end at some point after the Hull game. Absolutely, okay. they're going to they're going to they're going to beat Hull. They're going to beat Hull, and then it's going to it's going to tail off as it, as it normally does at this stage of the season. Um, it's look, it's going to be a really hard game because Hull are finding a little bit of a gear now um, where they are they're starting to tap as well, it. aren't they? Yes, my my definition of form is over five or six games, and 
<laughs> Correct. Yeah. There are two teams with form coming up head to head here. Um, and it might be the team with more quality that comes out of it, but I think you yeah, have got to give Preston credit. They have been brilliant over the last couple of games. And that Coventry, Coventry win, I think, is a big statement for them. And if they can back that up with another win here, then maybe, maybe they can dream of the top six push. Well, if they're going to get in the top six, which I do agree with you, just I still think is rather unlikely, but won't get carried away. Um, then teams like Hull are the teams they should be beating, uh, yeah, really, shouldn't they? Be. Have to be. Um, and look, Hull have been in fine form themselves, so this is a clash between two teams, banging form, and you fancy, well, what, one of them's got to come out on top in a way. Um, so who will it be? I, I mean, I, I've just been so impressed with Hull recently that um, the last two or three games anyway, because they were winning games without playing particularly brilliantly before that, weren't they? Um, now I'm looking at them thinking that it looks like it's all coming together very nicely. They're playing a bit more fluently and this is a game where they will fancy their chances as well. So, you know, both teams could come into this and in great form and think to themselves, we've got to get three points here to yeah. continue our playoff charge. My outsider for the weekend. Oh boy. It's Birmingham to beat Southampton. <laughs> um, you've played Mario Kart, haven't you, Justin? I've uh, I've dabbled in the past, yeah. Good, because um, I think what where you've played Mario Kart, have you ever been in a position where you're absolutely flying, you're overtaking everyone really quickly, it's going great, and then suddenly blue shell, banana skin, lightning, normal shell, another banana skin. That's kind of how it feels for Southampton right now. 25 games unbeaten to four <laughs> losses in five. Admittedly, their most recent loss was away at Liverpool in the Cup, so we can let them off What's for the that. But, I suppose you're right, yeah. But the others, the other losses were against Bristol City, Hull and Millwall. Now, aside from Hull, it's not a set of teams you'd be expecting Southampton to struggle struggle against. But here we are. They look really vulnerable right now. They've become so sloppy at the back, wasteful in front of goal. They're not controlling games like they were. And to make matters worse, one of their most influential players in Carl Walker-Peters went off with an injury against Liverpool. And at the time of recording, we don't know the extent of that, but if he's missing, it's a significant blow without a doubt. So when it rains, it pours and it just all seems to be going wrong for Southampton. And they need a result to try and curb this trend because otherwise the automatic promotion hopes, I mean, we were saying last weekend that they may potentially be over already. They will certainly be looking very, very dim, won't they, if they uh, don't get something from this game. But look, they face another potential banana skin in Birmingham City. I'd be much more confident here if Tony Mowbray was in the dugout, obviously. But they still have enough about them to do a job on Southampton. They were pretty handedly beaten by Ipswich last weekend, but that was away from home. And their home form since Mowbray has come in has been very solid. Three wins and a draw so far. And I could easily see that continuing this weekend, Justin. Yeah, one thing I want to point out is Russell Martin loses really badly as well. He loses <laughs> really, really badly. Obviously, going back to the Matthias Sarkic incident against Millwall last weekend, and then in the interview, post game interview against um, after the Liverpool game in midweek, the interviewer said to him, The Liverpool kids are really good, aren't they? And Russell Martin was like, Yep, told you that at the start. And it was just deadpan, blank. Yeah. Not not involved at all. And that for that reason, I kind of want to see Birmingham win because I want to see. <laughs> I want to see him bite even harder. But I just want to see him lose his rag even more as exactly, the season goes exactly. on. If, he, if he's at this stage, Justin, after just three losses in four oof. league games, imagine what it would be like if that continues even further. He'll be having a proper temper tantrum on the pitch, won't he? Like, imagine losing to West Brom in the playoff semi-final after West Brom keep a clean sheet in the first game, time waste, make it horrible, Corbrent does all these things. Uh, just and sat then, in the corner, <laughs> sulking. <laughs> sat in the corner, kicking over the iPad that they have next to their um, next to the dugout, <laughs> throwing bottles of Lucasade or whatever they drink nowadays. It's going to be carnage. It's going to be carnage. Russell Martin, Russell Martin's going to go full John Wick. He's going to, he's going to complete his transformation and go full John Wick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing else to add here, other than Southampton were beaten by Liverpool's children in midweek. That wasn't great. Southampton barely laid a glove on them. I'm all for Birmingham beating Southampton this weekend because. Yes, they're just so sloppy at the moment. Well, we will see, won't we? I mean, it's interesting to see what SBK, our, our friends there, have been doing because Southampton have now drifted from five to six to get promoted to seven to five mm -hmm. after this recent poor run of form. And I think one final thing that I'll say about Birmingham's home form is St Andrews seems to have 
an extra zing to it right now because they've finally finished the construction work there, which seemed to go on for years. The bottom stands were essentially out of action. They were basically building sites, weren't they, for so long? Yeah. And now they're back, and the atmosphere from what I'm seeing from the TV screen um, seems to have been turned up a notch now and the Birmingham fans will be right up for this one particularly because it's their first home game as well since Tony Mowbray was taken ill so they'll be wanting to show their support for old Mobes and if they can spur their team on to a massive massive win against one of the promotion hopefuls this season that'll be a great way to you know show their fondness for him right those are our predictions for the weekend it's now time for this. Scott High or Ryan Lowe? Kiss, it's all we need. Best, fucking shit, mate. Yes, it's time for Scott High or Ryan Lowe. This is the game where we have to rank four things from highest to lowest. It's as simple as that. And there's three questions. This week, I'm providing the questions for Justin Peach. Are you ready, Peachy boy? Yes, please. Good. There's a bit of a theme to these first two questions. So, uh, Make sure you acknowledge that. Um, you may have seen on the second tier Twitter this week, or X, as, it was, uh, as it's known now. Um, maybe don't know how, for long, how long that's going to last. But um, we revealed a Championship eleven on the highest scoring players based on their fancy Premier League point scoring system. Um, so check it out if you wish. So think about it this way. If there was a fancy Premier League version of the Championship, then how many points would these players have? That's basically what I'm asking. Um, and these are the following defenders that weren't included in that team, but I want you to rank them on what their score would be. Does that make sense? Yeah, sort of. Do I need to give you yeah. a number? No. No, you Fine. just need to rank them on who would have the cool. highest point score. Perfect. So those defenders are Leif Davis, Demetrius Gautas, Kenneth Powell, Joe Roden, I'm going to go Gautas top. Okay. Then Davis, then Roden, then uh, Powell. No, no. You've Fantastic. not got that right, Justin. You've Fantastic. not got that right. Um, I mean, you started off right with Gautas. He, has, he would have 111 points um, in fancy Premier League if he was involved. Um, next up is Kenneth Powell. And QPR, yeah. Um, what? Yeah, it surprised me a bit. He scored quite a few goals this season, to be fair to him. He's got one hundred. He would have 109 points. Gautas would have 111. I can't remember if I said or not. Um, next up would be Joe Roden with 104. Um, hasn't scored many goals. I don't think he scored any goals, actually, this season. Clean but sheet, obviously, he's yeah. a clean sheet machine, hence why he's on 104. And then, bizarrely, bottom of the pile is Leif Davis. The guy who's got the joint most assists in the division this season would only have 99 points in fancy Premier League. How bizarre. How bizarre. I think, I think it's something sheets. to do with the number of goals in clean sheets. Um, yeah, because it's which can a lot. Yeah, yeah. But Too still, many. I just thought he would be a lot higher than that. And, I mean, Gautas being top, he scored a few goals, to be fair to him, but still a bit a bit shocked by all this. Yeah. It's, it's I had to do the maths twice, put system. it that way. Fraudulent system, not a fan. Okay, well, didn't want to go that far, but here we are. Um, next up is the same question, but it's with attackers. So the four players are these, Justin. Will Keane, Jaden Philogene, Jonathan Rowe, Jorginho Ruta. Now, I must point out that you have to remember midfielders get more points for goals, and they also get more points for clean sheets as well. And I've counted Rowe and Philogene as midfielders in this case. So what are you going for, Justin? Keen, Philogene, Rowe, Ruta. Keen, Philogene, Rowe, Ruta. I'm going to go with Ruta. Okay. Then then Rowe, then Philogene, then Keen. I tell you what, Justin, fair play to you. You haven't got a single one right. <laughs> um, really good going. So top of the pile, I mean, I did just pretty much hint at this um, is Jonathan Rowe. He has got 123 points. Um, scored quite a few goals this season. Midfielders score more points with goals um, and clean sheets as well. So he's got 123 points. Next up, Jorginho Ruta. 106 points he would have. Next up is Will Keane with 93. 
And then bottom of the pile is Jaden Filiging with 88. Missed quite a few games with injury this season, Justin. True, 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 true. But I thought that maybe other things would play into it, but I don't think you've done the math on those, like dribbles and stuff. No. Cool. Negligent. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'd be here all day if I was doing that. I I didn't work out the bonus point system, but apart from that, everything else, 100% correct. Um, So not gone very well for you so far, Justin. Um, Now, you like music, don't you? It's all right, yeah. You, yeah. that's, a, that's a bloody Shrek song it's not a Shrek song <laughs> it's scandalous it's not a, Fre- a Shrek what song what earth are you on about you like music don't you that's a, that's a lyric from a song are you having a meltdown hallelujah it's from that song and that's on Shrek never mind no, it's Car- not yes it is no it's not yes so you're it is. right it is it's 100% a lyric can I carry One on million. yeah give me the question okay good um <laughs> So Justin Peach loves music and he, I can guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, is a huge fan of each of these artists. Can you rank for me the four most streamed artists on Spotify in 2023? They are Bad Bunny, Drake, Taylor Swift, The Weeknd. Who's your favourite out of them, Justin? Who the fuck is Bad Bunny? (laughs) I knew you might have a clue who Bad Bunny was. He's a... um, he, he's from Puerto uh, Rico. Um, he's he, he's he's very big in the Latin music scene. Right. Okay. Um, and then uh, you said Drake, Taylor Swift, and uh, The Weeknd. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, The Weeknd. Yeah. Name, um, name a name a Weeknd song, Justin Peach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, for, for those uh, who aren't aware, Justin Peach is the biggest hipster on earth yes when it comes to music yes um i i, I can am, you name a I drake am. song um i actually can't oh my I, God. I actually can't um, not, not a single one really? no, I'm, I'm erming a lot i genuinely cannot think of any drake songs and this, I think even you, my dad could name a drake song yeah your dad's cool um <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of one and bear in mind like a lot of people on instagram will listen to Drake and they'll have that but I, I can't I actually can't incredulous and now I'm stressed yeah surely you can have a Taylor Swift song can't you yeah 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 yeah. I can name a Taylor Swift song go on then it's a love story baby just say yes <laughs> that song is like 20 years old <laughs> Unbelievable. I always anyway, remember the classics. <laughs> Rank the four most streamed artists on Spotify in 2023, please. Um, so there's a reason why Taylor Swift is uh, a big artist. She gets to play in everywhere. So she's touring. So she's going to be the biggest streamer of 20. The biggest streaming artist and the biggest polluter in 2023. <laughs> that's, that's a libelous accusation, which I wish, <laughs> wish to distance myself from. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, I'll go with I'll go with old Swifty, and then I'll go with the um, Mr. Weekend. Um, okay. Uh, no, I think I saw that Drake released an album. All right. Actually, can't tell you what was on it. No, I was going to say <laughs> songs were on it, um, or whatever things were on it. So I'm going to go Drake second, then the Weekend, and then Bad Bunny because who you told you told me he's big in the Latin community, um, and. I don't wrestles know in WWE it. as well. Does he really? Yeah, yeah, he makes well, it. with that. Yeah, he pops up every so often. Um, or hops up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'd like to also correct myself. I said libelous. I meant slanderous uh, campaign, uh, uh, accusation. If, um, if Taylor wants to come for me, she come for me. Well, she, I'm sure she will. Um, anyway, um, you weren't <laughs> correct at all, Justin, with your selections. So Taylor Swift was top of coming. Of course, she was 29 billion streams on Spotify in 2023. Next up was Bad Bunny with 16 billion. Um, he's actually all right, to be fair. I, I've, I've listened to a bit of him. He is, he is quite good. Um, the Weeknd, 14.1 billion. And finally, Drake, 14 billion streams last year. What do you think of that, Justin? I think Drake's letting himself down. Um, Good. I don't know why. I think I know why he was in the news. I'm not going to say why, but yeah, um, please don't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I'm, I'm going to sit get comfortably. enough of that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm going to sit comfortably as to why I don't like any of those artists, and I'm going to stick to my hipster music. Good. That's it. Good. 
well, good to hear that, Justin. You stick yeah. to your principles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just before we go, um, I think we discussed it a, a few months ago. Um, you know how you, how I uh, have my um, Spotify playlists named after obscure Premier League footballers. Yes. Would you yeah, like yeah. to hear some of my most recent ones? Yeah, yeah. Always, always keen for it, Ryan. Always keen. Um, I can't remember which ones I revealed before. Um, but these are my three most recent playlists. Um, I don't know why I do this, by the way. I just it just keeps me entertained. Um, Moritz Foltz, um, from Fulham defender. Um, what's it, what's in that? I mean, he's German. They they love a bit of rave. They love a bit of house. I, uh, Got it. That was there. that's a noughties indie playlist. Okay. That is. Okay. I like that. I like that actually. Um, Gail Jive is the next Oof. one, and um, that's that's an emo playlist. Because <laughs> because. Because he had long hair and a beard. Because he looks like a goth. Uh, and the final <laughs> one is Rolando Bianchi. Uh, okay. It's an Oasis playlist. All right, Manchester City. Oh, I like the, you know, they're, they're good references. They're very creative. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I'll keep the listeners up to date with that as the, as the season goes on. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's with Scott High or Ryan Lowe. This has been the second tier preview show brought to you by SBK. So we're shaping up for a very exciting weekend once again in the Championship. So we'll have a little chit chat about it on Sunday where we'll review everything that happens in the Championship over the weekend and talk about any news as well. So we look forward to seeing you then. Quick reminder about our uh, contest involving Football Manager. If you want a free copy of that, you know how to enter um, screenshot a five-star review on whichever podcast platform you listen to us on and you could be in with a chance of winning a copy of football manager 2024 so why not get involved and um, but yeah this has been the second tier podcast i've been ryan dilks i've been just a peach and a big thank you for listening